from just what humans have put into space. How many individual pieces of junk are hurtling around our planet as we speak? Pause the video and have a guess in the comments. It would be pretty interesting to see what you think. Thousands? Tens of thousands? Well, according to the Technische Universität Braunschweig, which actively studies satellites and space debris, there are 29,000 objects bigger than 10 centimeters, only 1,900 of which are active satellites, 700,000 bigger than 1 centimeter, and an estimated 200 million objects bigger than 1 millimeter. That's 200 million objects traveling up to 28,000 kilometers per hour relative to Earth, racing over our planet. Have a look at this real-time visualization of Earth and some of the larger things orbiting it. The US Department of Defense actively monitors objects over 10 centimeters to try and prevent collisions from happening, with each of these objects' orbits mapped out precisely. The red objects are active satellites, the blue objects are old rocket parts, and the gray objects are debris, like out-of-commission satellites. It should be noted that this isn't a scale, Earth is massive in comparison to these objects in reality. But with so much in orbit around Earth, especially in this low Earth orbit, it's amazing satellites aren't colliding all the time. There actually has already been a hypervelocity crash between two satellites around Earth. In 2009, Iridium-33 and Cosmos-2251 collided at speeds of 42,000 km per hour smashing the satellites to bits. The biggest of the debris from this collision is still being monitored, because understandably there is a lot of it. Smaller impacts happen much more regularly. Here is before and after shots of the Sentinel-1 satellite, after an object only 5mm in size impacted one of its solar arrays, leaving a 40cm impact crater. Chips and nicks can even be made by objects only a few thousandths of a millimeter across, like this 7 millimeter wide chip on one of the windows of the cupola capsule on the International Space Station. With so many objects in space, and more constantly being put up there, it's not surprising to find out that more collisions are expected to happen. In fact, we seem to be nearing the threshold for the feared Kessler Syndrome, which is where, if a big collision happens, the parts from the debris go on to impact other satellites, causing a massive ripple effect until pretty much nothing in orbit is left unscathed. If any of you saw the fantastic film Gravity, that is basically what happened at the start of that film. JAXA, or the Japanese Space Agency, earmarked 100 big objects that need to be removed from Earth's orbit at a rate of 5 per year to prevent this situation from happening. Objects in a low Earth orbit will eventually de-orbit by themselves, as there is still a tiny amount of atmospheric drag at these altitudes to slow them down. Most objects will burn up on re-entry, so no risk of objects raining down and impacting the ground. But this gradual descent before re-entry could last hundreds to thousands of years. With that being the case, it's no wonder there are currently space mission concepts aimed at deorbiting space debris manually. Some of them are pretty clever. Like using nets. Solar sails to create greater drag. Or even a slingshot. However, there isn't much money to be made yet from cleaning up after ourselves, and so these cleanup missions aren't being pushed and utilized as much as maybe they should be. Human nature tends to show us that we are only mildly concerned about the potential for catastrophe, and there doesn't seem to be a proportionate amount of money being spent at getting things back from space compared to putting them up there in the first place. My personal thought is that if a space agency or a company puts something in space, Surely it's their responsibility to get it again once it becomes defunct. Is that reasonable? Thanks for watching. 
Check out more Astrum answers in the playlist here. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on awesome space videos in the future. A big thanks to people who support the channel. If you would like to as well, you can either become a member by clicking the join button below, and I also have Patreon. All the best, and see you next time.